choice, the power to choose. I think people still forget that sometimes, that you have a power to choose. Not allowing your emotions to dictate, but the power to choose. Hallelujah. We are seeing many things happen globally. Fires, floods, earthquakes, all a part of the they call the beginning of birth pangs or beginning of sorrows. It will continue to increase until everything that is shaken and that isn't shaken will be shaken. There's a shaking going on. And it's to expose the wickedness and it's to bring the body through the squeezing fire Purging, purging and purging and pruning. <laughs> Hallelujah. P and P. <laughs> and you thought it was a gas station. Oh, that's BP. Sorry. <laughs> that's bubbles and prayer. Crazy. Hallelujah. Would you turn to the book of Revelation? We gather so that we can be refreshed in the presence of God, because he says, forsake not to assemble, and so that we can come back and be reconnected. We all need a refreshing all the time. Amen? I look forward to the place where there's 24-hour worship. Hallelujah. Everybody on the same campus. Twenty-four hour prayer line. Yes. Yeah. As there's a distribution of the water for life, we'll pray for the water for life because it's coming back. It's coming back. Anointed water for life bottles. With this prayer line on it, phone number for people to call. We're bringing it back. Jesus says, "I'm bringing it back." It's time because it's going to be a, sor a resource for people. You know, one of the greatest resources is water. It's water. We need living water from above, but we need physical water here in the temporary. Because without water, you can't survive. You can only suck so much juice out of a fruit, you know. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 7. Everybody there? Anybody there? All right. Now we're on the same page. Praise God. And war broke out where? In heaven. For some of us, it broke out right in our own homes. <laughs> in our neighborhood. <laughs> My next door neighbor. <laughs> it's breaking out everywhere. War is breaking out everywhere. Does everybody understand that? Listen, if it's breaking out in heaven, it's breaking out on earth everywhere. And that war hasn't stopped. It's amazing that so many people just think that, oh, it was then, it's nothing happening now. Those are people that are really deceived and blinded. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. In that realm, there was the third heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Gosh, we need to put this on a billboard. The devil who deceives the whole world. Hello. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth 
and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows it is a what? A short time. And I want you to understand that he knows he's got a short time. Why? Because he's being exposed everywhere. His forces, his military, his operations, they're being not only exposed, but they're being destroyed. His underground military base is in all these other, th other things that he is in ownership with and control over banking system. Everything is being destroyed. It's being taken over by the righteous. We're still battling the media. The media is, right now is very difficult to battle, but I'm telling you, once all of this stuff comes to the surface, they will be arrested for treason because it is treasonous. You know, it blows me away. Why aren't they arrested now, you know? I mean, they just found out that the, the whole, what is the Mueller or whatever investigation, they just found out they erased all of their cell phones. Hello, that's called interfering with an investigation. I'll tell you what, if I would have done that, my butt would have been in jail. I'd like to try and explain that to the judge. Your Honor, I dropped it in the toilet. But for them, because there's two different wages, amen, there's two different categories. And this is what it, it, the world has been looking at all the time, but now it's coming to the surface. Now people are being exposed of their wickedness. Now the governments are being exposed for the wickedness, and this is just not our country. It's globally. It's all over. Now, a lot of the child smugglers are being busted. Thousands and thousands of these organizations. People have no idea that for them, smuggling children and selling children is more than gold and silver. Can you imagine trading off humans to make a profit? It's bad enough some of them are selling themselves to make a profit. But we are definitely in the last days in perilous times, aren't we? And the devil knows that it is a short time, so he's going to do everything that he can. But I'm telling you, God sent a way of escape. He sent a Savior. Amen? And he also sent the power of Christ. Everyone say, the power of Christ. <laughs> it is the essence of God, Christ. The power of Christ, Christ himself, is the essence of who God is. It is his character, his words, his presence, his love, his authority, and him as creator. Is everybody with me? Is everybody understanding? I'll say it again. The power of Christ is the essence of who God is. See, many people have always known that there was a God, but they never really knew who he was. The Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing, Jesus the Christ, the Jesus is the body, amen? But the Christ came in into this realm. He is the essence of God Almighty as creator, bringing his character, his words, his presence, his love, and his authority into this realm so that he might share it and impart it in his believers. There is no religion or no other organization that can do this. <laughs> Nothing. They do a lot of witchcraft. They try that, you know. But the presence of God, the power of God, outdoes every type of witchcraft. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The power of Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Hallelujah. In fact, it should be Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, let's speak it together. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. Don't give up. Many times people want to give up because things aren't happening their way. But don't give up because Yahweh is coming, I'm telling you. 
But we have re renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, the message of truth, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age, the devil, powers of darkness, demonic forces, has blinded. Who do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel or the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. Now this is very powerful. For we do not preach ourselves... But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Christ's sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. It says that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God Almighty, the essence as a, as a creator, is in the face of Jesus. That's why the word says, seek his face. Amen. God himself in body of Jesus, the Christ, the power. I want to share something with you importantly because there's the presence of God and the power of God. The power does not go before the presence. The presence comes and the power is released. Does everybody get it? The presence comes and the power is released. That's why it's so important about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit brings the presence... And then he's got to put his presence somewhere. Amen? But he puts his presence in a cleansed vessel. That's why it's washed by the blood. That's why the blood always goes before the presence. When the vessel is cleansed through the blood of Christ, through repentance, the presence is allowed to come. When the presence comes... And the leading of the Spirit brings us to a place to release the power. Now, sometimes you didn't know the power is being released because it's not about a feeling. I've laid hands on people, prayed for people. I didn't feel nothing. And, man, they felt everything. And I'm thinking, man, I want that. And then there's times when I do feel it. I feel the draw of God's presence, the release of his power. But some, most of the time, it's not about a feeling. See, so many people are looking for the feeling of the power of God. When we're to be seeking his presence, which releases the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. So in the higher level of worship, the more you press in, the more God's presence. Why? What are you pressing into? His presence. Amen. When I was laying next to a pool and the presence of God came and filled me to overflowing, I felt like a soda bottle. It was shaken and popped. And when it popped, this funny language came out. And let me tell you, there was power. Power all over the place. I went over one day. I was, I was floating with the Lord in the pool. You know he likes to float in the pool with you. And this is right after my experience with the Lord, and he began to talk to me. He was training me and teaching me things. And all of a sudden, I heard this thunk out of a tree. And I got out of the pool, and I walked over to it. And I said, there was a dead bird there. 
and his neck was hanging on the side, you know. And, and man, I didn't want to touch it at first. And then the Lord gave me love for this bird. And I'm thinking, why are you giving me so much love for this bird? I don't even know this bird. I've never seen it before in my life. It's never said anything to me. I never said anything to it. Anyways, I went to go pick it up. And I said, Lord, next thing I know, this thing came back to life and took off. The power was released. I didn't feel anything. But the bird got, was brought back to life. Again, this is, these are areas where it's not about our own understanding. And see, so many times we're still relying on our own understanding. This is where denying ourselves is vitally important in everything. If God says do it, do it. But make sure it's God or you'll look like an idiot. <laughs> now, there is a, um, sometimes there's an automatic healing, which is a miracle, and then there's a process of healing. So the more you come into God's presence, the more opportunity it is to be healed. Amen? Colossians 1.15. It says, He is the what? Image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. In other words, you know, we have a hard time because we, we're limited in the area that realizing that God, his presence, upholds everything. His presence upholds everything. All the universes, whatever else is out there, that we don't know about is uphold his presence. It says we live and breathe and have our being in him. That's his presence. Amen? But there are multiple dimensions of this. And we are in a dimensional realm, but from the third dimensional realm, his presence come. Even Jesus had to break through. Amen? He had to come through a womb. He had to come into the physical. He had to break through. So that he could break out and give me and you the power to break down. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Is everybody okay? Um, in verse 18, and he is the head of the what? The body, not the center. He is the head. He is the head of the body. The church who was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in him all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness shall dwell. Wow. And by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If, there's that area of cooperation, if you what? Indeed, you continue in the faith. That's your connection. If you indeed continue in your relationship and the connection, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now, this is powerful. It says he is the image, the expressed character of God Almighty, the extension of his power to create and to rule, to reconcile what was lost by the influence of sin, and to overcome Everything by the power of Christ. Everything has been granted to me and you. Everything. Again, we deal with the area of identity. We deal with the area the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, where we get so caught up into the moment in self that we lose sight of who we are. In Romans chapter 1.
So can you have the power without the presence? No. That's why the word talks about in those who deny the power of God. Well, if they deny the power of God, they're denying the presence of God. Romans 1, 16. Power of Christ. Let's speak it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were what? They were what? Darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served creature rather than creator who is blessed forever. The just live by faith. Again, you and I live by our connection, our relationship with Christ. Amen? In his creation, he expressed himself through his power. His wrath is against those that reject the way of escape who are brought under the power of darkness. His wrath comes upon those. What have they done? They've rejected truth and they've rejected his way of escape. Many uh, are still brought under the power of darkness. It's called deception, isn't it? <sighs> Thank you. In Romans chapter 5, The power of Christ. Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, you are justified by your connection, your relationship with him. You are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into his plan. Hello? This grace. In which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only, ooh, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not what? It doesn't disappoint. Many people fall into an area of disappointment because they didn't get what they wanted. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. For when we were still without strength or power, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having known 
been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Hmm. He has the power to lay down and pick up his own life. Amen? That's what he told the leaders. I think it was Pilate when he asked him about who he was. He says, look, I mean, you got, Jesus told him, you got no power. I got power to lay down my own life and raise it up again. You and I are justified by the connection of, of our relationship. In this justification, God justifies us. In other words, he qualifies us. And what does he do? Then he grants me and you access to his plan of escape and his purpose in this realm. But again, we have to go back to that constant connection. We have to have constant fellowship. We have to maintain the presence of God. And again, if you're still relying on the feeling of the presence of God, you'll easily be deceived. If you get convicted, that's God's presence. You get rebuked, that's God's presence. <laughs> if you sense his love, that's God's presence. Does everybody understand it? If you're rejecting wickedness and evilness, that's God's presence. If you hate evil, that's God's love. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, by staying connected, we will overcome disappointment. Why? Because by staying connected to the future, it is called hope. Because you know the last, the end result. We win. No matter what it seems like, we win. And does everybody get there? We win no matter what. Jesus already done and paid the price. He came before me and you and did it all. The, the, the game is already over. We already won. Now we're going to just play it out. Amen. So in this, through the power of Christ, we will have to break through the flesh. Amen. We'll have to break out of the emotional bondage. And we'll have to break down the walls of limitations. That is the purpose of the power of Christ for in me and you. Why? Because now we're carrying the presence of God. What's he want to do? He wants to break out. He wants to release his power. So you and I are going to express his power just by character. Just by character. Amen? So that means you and I got to constantly break out, break through the flesh. Remember, the flesh is the, at the place of sin. It's against you, not for you. So we have to break through the flesh, break out of the emotional bondage, and break down the walls of limitations. That's the purpose of the anointing in our lives. And it can only be done through the power of Christ. It allows me and you to maintain a mindset of victory knowing the end result. Knowing the end result is hope. So no matter what you're going through, you know the end result. That gives you hope. That keeps you connected to the future. How about standing on God's word? Doesn't that give you hope? Well, isn't God's three-dimensional? It's from the future. Amen, his word. Amen. Ephesians 2. The power of Christ. And then you get the power. In the world, first they get the money, then they get the power. <laughs> but it's the wrong power. They think they have power because they have the money. They're about to find out soon that their money cannot buy eternity. Ephesians 2, verse 11. 
Let's speak it together. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who were called circumcision or uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made in flesh by hands. That at that time you were without power, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in what? Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In other words, cleansed by the blood of Christ so you could draw near. <clears throat> For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, which is hatred. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom the whole body being fitted together grows, everyone say grows, into a holy temple in the Lord, and whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In Christ, presence and power. <laughs> Remember, he came to what? Save mankind. He came to save mankind. Again, there's no power without his presence. And he bought mankind by his sacrifice of his blood, releasing his redemption, reconciliation, and the anointing of the power of Christ to overcome anyone that's willing to follow him he gave it to. Again, that follow is also associated with belief. So when someone says they believe, they better be following. That's why many people who say they believe don't have the power to overcome anything. Because they're really not following. They're overcome by emotion. They're overcome by the world's circumstances. They're overcome by fear. They have no power. If they have no power, they have no presence. And that's what the enemy wants to do. And he does it very well. Second Peter chapter 1. Listen, the enemy has a novel of excuses. Amen? Because he's got the butt ministry. But, but. He drives a moped. <laughs> Second Pete, chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and his divine power, that's called Christ, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by what? Glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in a world through lust. Now, so there's the divine power and there's the divine nature. The divine nature is his presence. Does everybody get that? That's his presence. And the divine power is what's released. That's what does creation. That's what does movement. That's what changes things. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. 
Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Divine power of creation, divine nature of his presence. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Verse 115. Everybody there? Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, give to you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation and a knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and, mighty, and might and dominion and, ev and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things in the, ch the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all and all. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and the knowledge of knowing him and understanding his call for me and you. His call. What's he say? May that abound to each and every one more and more and more. And Galatians 4. How many of y'all need the wisdom? How about revelation? Amen. The relation, the restraints are removed. What's the restraints of the flesh? Uh, Galatians 4 1. You know, it's still amazing to me in how the enemy is deceiving the body about not, for, not gathering together. It's still amazing to me that it's still happening all over. I mean, what the heck? For me, it's like, well, where's the love of God? Where's the desire for his presence? You know, where is it? What's happened? I think it's bringing a lot of exposure. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Now that I say that an heir, as long as he is child, does not differ from a slave, though he is master of all, but under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those things which were by nature are not God's. Hallelujah. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn away, turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Let me tell you, many have turned. 
because of the lack of the presence of God. The lack of presence of God is the lack of power of God, so they're not able to overcome. They're being turned. They're being under the rule of deception. Amen? So they're forsaking to assemble. They're not receiving the presence of God and they're not releasing the power of God. That's why we've got to stand in a gap and pray. Prayer. We are heirs of God in Christ. We are offsprings of the anointing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Power of Christ. First Corinthians one. Verse twenty six. Speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the, <laughs> the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Oh, yes. We are called out of darkness into Christ by his power and into his presence. Amen. In 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Verse 1. It says, whoever believes, it means whoever follows that Jesus is Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not what? Burdensome. Why? Because you have his presence and power. They're not burdensome. You're doing them because you love him. Amen? Amen. You're submitting to him because you know it takes that to resist the devil. So if you're submitting to him, you're receiving his presence. And by submitting to him, you're able to release the power to overcome the devil. In Acts chapter 1. So if you're, trying to over, if you're not submitting to God, can you overcome the enemy? No. You know, people still have that problem. They're still blaming everybody else and God for their stuff. When they keep rejecting God's presence, and they keep rejecting what he's saying to do or submitting to him. Hallelujah. Acts 1 verse 8, is everybody there? But you shall receive. Anybody there? We got a bunch of powers all over here. Power, 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 yes! But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea. Samaria and to the end of the earth. So when the Holy Spirit presence comes upon you, he's able to release the power through you. Amen. Philippians 4. In 
No presence, no power. Philippians 4 and verse 10. Ooh. No, verse 8, I'm sorry. Philippians 4, 8. Let's speak it. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on those things. Look at those things. Rejoice in those things. And the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in us, these do. And the God of peace will be what? With you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? Content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, the power that what? Strengthens me. Does everybody see that? The power that strengthens us. Again, there is power in the Christ. Without the power of Christ, you and I can do nothing. But first we must maintain the presence. And by maintaining the presence, the power is released. And it's not about an emotional feeling. And I'm not saying you can't. You can. But we don't look for the feeling. We stand on what he says. It says we live by faith. The just live by faith. You and I should hit, carry the character in the area of the emotion of peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen? That's what it's about. If we're not walking in peace, joy, and righteousness, then we're walking in torment. We're walking in fear. And that spirit of fear is bringing confusion. There isn't a sound mind. And where there's confusion at, the enemy has access. And then he begins to manipulate individuals. It doesn't mean we're perfect. We're perfect in him, but we're not perfect in us. Amen? We're completed in him, but we're not completed in us. That's why he's still working on us. Hallelujah. We're still going through it. But we're going to go through it, right? We're going to break through. Amen? We're going to break out, and we're going to break down. Amen? To God be the glory. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for the power of Christ that we can break out, break through, <laughs> break through, break out, and break down. In every area of our life, Lord, whatever comes against us, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, Lord, bring to remembrance by your spirit of who we are in your presence and the power of your Christ. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.